just know she feels just as bad about it as you do. Hi, everybody. I'm Reina. Chiang Mai. I I'm Sebastian. Oops. We did the same for Bali. If you haven't seen it yet, you can go ahead and check it. And now it's our term for uh, Chiang Mai in Thailand. We do these trip recaps for every place we go to just to share with you how it was. And if you want to go there, you go there. And if you don't, you don't. The local culture. Bali was very, you know, living for them. Like if you walk in, they're like, ah, let me help you. Hi. Oh, my gosh. Chiang Mai, uh, no. That was actually one of my favorite things. They're going to yeah. go about their day doing what they do, whether you're there or not. So instead, when our first, very first restaurant, we walk in, they look like they didn't want us to walk in. Go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll come help you. But, but not in a bad way. Yeah, they're not at all in a bad way. It's just like they're not trying to kiss your ass. Everyone lives at night there. Oh. Oh my like, God. if you walk around during the morning, it's pretty much a ghost town almost. If you walk around at night, like evening, it was to the point where if we walked at night, we were like, where the fuck are these people during the day? All the tourists came out at night too. And it's like, why are we the only tourists around in the day? It really felt like, where are they all hiding? Is there a place that we're not aware of? So many different markets. We went to a ginormous one. I don't even know how big it was. It was huge. Yeah, it was like a bunch of streets, like four or five streets. It's really cool. So that's part of local traditions and culture for sure. The whole market thing. Everyone seems like they have a stall. Yeah. Like everyone somehow makes something or sells something accommodation we had a great hotel it was called p21 really nice yet another place where they don't do much above and beyond type thing but they're super nice when you walk in super nice when you walk out that room was really nice clean every day the and windows were a bit eh? yeah the window situation is a bit strange so our room we purposely picked to have the bigger windows but it turns out the bigger windows were looking at a staircase that we sit on in one of our videos. If you saw the Bali recap, then those stairs were the stairs we were looking at from our room as well. Internet was better, but not amazing. In Bali, we pretty much had places to fill our water bottles, like nonstop at the hotel, which was great. It's actually really hard to come by water without paying. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing about these trips, and here's something that panics her, but it's something that's also needing to be accepted, is in, at least in Asia, Southeast Asia, there's a lot of waste. Yeah. There's a lot of plastics. As much as we are super careful at home and we do as little waste as possible, but their main way of getting us water was a plastic water bottle every day. So anytime that you've ever seen us with plastic things, just know she feels just as bad about it as you do, if you do. Foods. Fuck, it was good. I was just about to say not as good as Bali. Fuck, it was good. You see, that's where our tastes are different. Yeah. I was in heaven in Chiang Mai. I wasn't. Uh, first of all, I love Pad Thai. The amount of vegan Pad Thai available, amazing. The amount of like just delicious food that I like available, amazing she's more of a raw vegan organic thingy and there wasn't many of that i found one that i really liked and i tried to go to a lot it's a chain pure vegan heaven she made me go there too many times which i wasn't a fan of i was in heaven she wasn't so much food wasn't bad it was good though yeah like in bali i was like oh mm. in chiang mai i was like and I was all oh, that's that's how it switches. So there's this one restaurant that had like a bunch of vegan pastries. It's delicious. I was literally buying like cinnamon buns like every day or three cinnamon buns at a time so that yeah. I'd have some for the next little while. Three cinnamon buns on one donut all at once. Yes. So what? What are you gonna do about it? Huh? You're gonna let me have it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. <laughs> the food was good. Yeah, pastries, delicious. It was really long to have a good coffee. In fact, I had my actual first good coffee the last day before leaving. I had pretty much zero coffee the whole time we were there. It's a bit depressing to try to think about it. It's her fault. She's not ordering coffee. It's not depressing. Landscape. It feels like this city was like both counterpoints for us because I really enjoyed the layout of Chiang Mai. I love that it was like a grid. So central Chiang Mai is like a square and then it's literally surrounded by water. And then the streets are either squares or some diagonal. So fucking confusing. Everything was so simple. That's like the city landscape. What was cool about Chiang Mai too is like the nature. Every time we would go to an activity, they're usually pretty far off. And those roads were so gorgeous. They were like twisties in the nature. No cracks, no potholes, just nice soft cement through the forest. You, you feel like you're in the jungle. Looking at all the big trees. It was really, really amazing. So you have both like the city vibe, but you also have some nice nature. Honestly, part of the landscape that we can mention too is the amount of abandoned places it was so crazy how many places are just left including the mall 
Yeah, empty mall that you saw in our Bali recaps. We found an abandoned herb medicinal garden. Garden. Yeah, in the university. It's still positioned as if it was like you could walk and get an introduction to the plants, except everything's dead or left Dying. to grow on their own. But it was kind of nice and spooky at the same time. I gotta say, one of my favorite things too is riding the scooter. The way everyone rides together. Bali was a bit more chaotic, but working. And here, people don't really warn each other. Like you're, they're not actively honking or turning their flashers on, like they're. Blinkers, but it feels like all the bikers like scooters and motorcycles like gang up i fucking love that every time we ride and i end up like mm -hmm. fitting in the group because i ride my motorcycle at home i'm really comfortable riding the way they do adventures so one of the best days of our life collectively happened on this trip it was called visiting elephants la 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 we went to an elephant sanctuary holy fuck it's even better than you think it is there's four elephants and a baby and we got to feed the elephants because they really like bananas and watermelon we got to like shove it right in their mouths and then we went on a little like jungle trek with them they destroy the forest literally heaven a anybody else destroying the forest i'm not happy elephants just trying to go through and choosing to rip trees off hilarious because they look like they're throwing a fit in the best way they eat all day they're awake for 20 hours of the day and they spend it all pretty much eating and it's important i think to to point out that we found specifically a sanctuary that like cares for them this sanctuary would be doing exactly what they do with guests on any day where there's no guests we it's, like looked after the elephants yeah we just pretty much get to participate like the sanctuary people no writing no they weren't being moved around at all like if it was eating time then we were feeding them when we went to swim with them they led the way. We're going for a swim and we just happen to tag along. And the owners, are the people that work there, loved the elephants. It was adorable. The I, elephants loved them too. Like you could see. And even said, like, like it takes like six months. Six months. For an yeah. elephant to get to know you. And then they know you. It's It was really amazing to see. We got to chat with one of the one-to-one -one caretakers. We could see like the elephant, even like how much she loved him. Very different to how she was pushing on us, even though she was enjoying us. Uh, we connected really well with elephants. There was a grandma at the first camp we went to she's 52 i really clicked with her and then the baby was like when there was a lot of people was pretty much the main attraction mm -hmm. but then once everyone was gone and we were still there because we were going on that trek that baby came up to us and the second we got in the bus that morning the first thing the guide said was there's a baby elephant there and he is naughty so when he came to us he was on some on some naughty shit break a fence he broke a bench yeah like, just just because he just hits on it and breaks it and then we went to the second camp to see a 76 year old elephant which was amazing because i clicked even more with that i feel like i really like the old elephants they seem so like peaceful and just slow like they're all slow but they're the older slow. ones were really slow in a, such a nice way you could tell they're just like at peace and just following what they have to do or what they're doing what they want lots of deep connections heaven if you're ever in Chiang Mai, do that. Look for the, the real sanctuaries. Don't like, ride them. Don't ride elephants. Do your research. We pretty much did proper research into like the one we were interested in. Another activity we did, zip line. Ooh, I've never zip lined before. I went to the longest and highest zip line in Asia. So fun. 1,200 oh meters. And it was fast. Like it was a lot more. Like that was just the longest. We did a lot of zip lines. It was really, really fun. Just swinging above jungle from one mountain to the next. It was kind of so sick. So pretty. Next big activity. We went down a sticky waterfall. You could climb up the waterfall. Or climb down, but we chose to climb up. Climbing down is dumb. It's a sticky waterfall. It's this thing that happens because of limestone. So as the waterfall pours, if there's a limestone source connected to it and it kind of just hardens as it goes. So this sticky waterfall is really cool. And then we went all the way to the bottom and we just walked up, which is wild to just say, oh yeah, I walked up a waterfall. And this one we rode ourselves to. So the other two activities, we hopped on a tour bus. But this one, we rented a scooter, a scooter ride on highway speeds. Oof. The one thing about these trips, if you're going to ride a scooter, be someone that rides at home too. Oh God, yes. Too many tourists hop on scooters thinking they can pull it off. And it's not as easy as you think and especially not in a place that drives like people here like it is pretty fucking intense one adventure that i tried out that we tried out i said i because i'm the one that enjoyed it so. i thought it was fine i really loved it we did a sensory <laughs> deprivation tank like float tank you float for like 70 minutes in no lights just the water water's perfect temperature for your skin so you don't feel what's in what's out i fell asleep like three times i had three tiny naps while i was in it the thing i've 
noticed now that we've been in two cities, when I don't feel like doing city shit, I can't do shit. Versus when I'm at a beach place and I don't feel like doing adventures, I can go to the beach. And cities are much more like cement, less like benches and nice things, like relaxing spots. Yeah, I mean, I do miss the walks, but I found a lot of city things I like to do. Like I got a manicure, get a facial. And then she says, I don't want to go with her. He could get a facial? I'm okay. My face perfect. Not many challenges other than just our own entertainment level with the place. Highlights. I know the last time we did a Bali recap, I said that the yoga in Bali was really good. Fuck Bali yoga. I found the best yoga studio in the world in Chiang Mai. Wild Rose Yoga Studio. I love you forever and always. You have my heart. Phenomenal. Like, I literally can't say enough about it. The classes were super long. They were super advanced. The studio was super nice. The owner was wonderful. The adjustments were great. Actually, heaven. I was going, like, twice a day near then because I wanted to go yeah. as much as I could. Four hours a day in that place. I think it's good to mention that you've been doing yoga since you were 10. It's it, probably the best yoga studio I've ever been to. So she kept really, really, really going on about it. I didn't join this one because, to me, it sounded like it wouldn't be too long, too slow, and I'm easily distracted with my whole uh, ADHD thing. It is very hard. There's no music. Adjustments are intense. That's why I like it though, because I never feel very challenged in yoga class. So actually being challenged was like, oh my god, finally. My highlights, pad thai's baby, pad thai's. The one downside to pad thai is they never serve enough. That's my downside to many restaurants, honestly. The more we eat at restaurants, the more I realize the thing where restaurants do this. You're ordering one thing, and what they do is when they bring your plate, they add a fucking salad. Which like, is not bad for some people. But like, I'm ordering a thing I want. Half the plate's a fucking salad. I just want pad thai. Fill the plate. I tried asking, can you just fill the plate? And they're just like, huh? I just started ordering two plates. And then they would give me a giant fucking plate. And that would work. Honestly, this was great for me. It was a great time. Great desserts. Mango sticky rice. I like it. A mango sticky rice. Super common in Thailand. That's like, Everywhere. like that's kind of the go-to dessert. Really, really good. Really fun. One of my highlights is actually the two guides for the elephant sanctuary adventure. Oh my God, they're actually hilarious. Yeah, the guy that picked us up was like really entertaining. A lot of the time he was telling us cool stories with the elephants and stuff. And the other one, I had like a super like, solid 30 minute conversation, just one-on-one, -on -one. me, him, and the 76 year old elephant. I got to hear so many stories about like them, how they survived through COVID and how it was difficult and some of the situations or how the 76 year old elephant does can no longer go in the river to wash herself like all the other elephants do. So they have to wash her with a bucket. She's too fragile now and that would be dangerous for her. We had a solid conversation with him about the cultures. Half of Thailand is actually originally from China and the other half was from Vietnam, I think. It's two different populations, different languages all together. Thai is an extra language that people will choose to learn. He uh, learned English from YouTube. Yeah, he was good. His English was good. Yeah, it was. So those two guys, one of my highlights as well. I guess it's worth saying their name. Elephant Jungle Sanctuary. Worth checking out. Do you have any deep reflections? Go to Wild Rose Yoga. One of my reflections was that realization of city versus beach. Like, why? beach calls to me so much the city at some point doesn't fill me there was a lot of times honestly where i just stayed in our room not because i'm like ah, i don't want to go outside just because i was like i don't really feel like it and then there's nowhere else a beach place will have that both activities we can either drive to them if we want or i can go to the beach and do nothing so that was one of my reflections there's honestly lots of things to do in chiang mai it's a nice place my favorite thing was that it felt like we were just allowed to be around as opposed to like they live for us it was just yeah, you guys can be around while we do our thing. And if you pay, we'll serve you food. I love that. Just go. Go have fun. Yeah. Honestly, a little bit more cash transactions here yeah. than Bali. Bali is very friendly for credit cards, like tap on our phone. Here is like a 50-50. My tip for you, if you end up cashing out, don't just use any ATMs. Not that we've ever had a problem with it. What our trick is, I look for the bank and then I go to the ATM there. A lot of the times they actually have a security guard literally by the ATM machine. You're safe. No one's fucking with the machine because he's making sure no one's fucking with it or mm -hmm. with you. So if you're having to take out cash on your trip, I really found going to the bank something that reassures me and they're pretty much everywhere uh, transaction wise you're good otherwise they'll still half half kind of be ready with cash though be ready where the fuck are we now phuket we're phuket we're in phuket we're having a great time here's your little teaser it is too and if you enjoyed this well thank you next time you'll see a recap it'll be for phuket uh, actually leave a like it helps subscribe to us or not do as you please okay i i'm a believer in free will okay bye thank you for watching we will see you in the next one Bye. -bye. <laughs> <laughs>